the soldiers of the Indian Army will not face the Chinese soldiers, who are shivering from the bitter weather. Instead of this, China has parked its robot army. Robots that are equipped with machine guns are deployed on the border with India for pursuing its sinister aspirations. Because of the challenging terrain and the Chinese soldiers' lack of experience with cold and high altitude, the People's Liberation Army has begun to deploy robot vehicles for transportation and even reconnaissance. Thousands of PLA soldiers are unable to deal with the severe weather and poor oxygen levels in Aksai Chin. According to media reports, China has sent dozens of unmanned vehicles equipped with weapons and supplies to Tibet. Most of these have been deployed along the LAC adjoining India. In this area, 50,000 soldiers of both sides are stationed face to face. These unmanned vehicles include the Shark Claw, which can be controlled wirelessly, and is armed with a light machine gun, which can be operated remotely. The Shark Claw is an unmanned Android platform that can be used to carry out battlefield reconnaissance, patrolling, assault and transport missions in dangerous, dirty, monotonous and dull combat environment. Apart from this, the Mule 200 has been deployed, which is an unmanned supply vehicle, but can also be fitted with a weapon. How India can counter Chinese robot soldier deployment. The Indian Army is on the lookout for unmanned ground vehicles, UGV. The demand for such a platform derives from the challenges experienced in Ladakh including as occurrences involving a military battle with China at above 15,000 feet in altitude. An unmanned ground vehicle is a vehicle that works while in touch with the ground and without the presence of a human on board. The vehicle assists infantry troops in high altitude areas with surveillance, tactical reconnaissance, targeting enemy positions, delivering critical supplies and carrying out rapid evacuations. The Army wants the vehicles to be operated remotely as well as in an autonomous mode. Unmanned vehicles can also be used to detect explosives and neutralize improvised explosive devices. The Army has stated that a robotic arm with the capacity to lift a minimum weight of 5 kilograms is a must. Apart from UGVs, India should also deploy UAVs. Today, drones have become an important part of military arsenals across the world. Because conventional warfighting strategies are woefully unable to deal with these new age offensive weaponry. The new age offensive weaponry and their lethality is only going to increase in the future. With advances in machine learning, artificial intelligence and precision guidance. Drones have low radar cross-section, slow speed and a small size lending to its stealth and concealment advantages in battlefields, and thereafter making it difficult to identify and localize. On the other hand, conventional radar systems are not meant for detecting small flying objects. And, even if they are calibrated that way, they might confuse a bird for a drone and the system may get overwhelmed. India also needs to proactively consider utilizing its space capacities for safeguarding its territorial interests. China has established a advanced satellite monitoring center and astronomical observatory at Ingari in Tibet Autonomous Region, roughly 125 kilometers distant from the line of actual control. The facility in Tibet is so advanced that it can not only track but also blind Indian satellites. In response to China, India established a satellite tracking and data reception center in the Himalayan state of Bhutan that will also strategically serve to counter a similar Chinese facility in the region. The ground station is the brain of the entire satellite network. Dedicated reconnaissance satellites take photographs of targets on the ground and relay them to receiving stations in nearly real time. These satellites, however, cannot take continuous images, like a television camera. Instead, they take a black and white photograph of a target every few seconds. 
Because they are in low orbits, and are constantly moving, they can photograph a target, for only a little, over a minute, before they move out of range. The Indian Space Research Organization's ground station, in Bhutan is expected to serve, as a strategic asset for the country. Considering its geographical placement, between India and China, the recent tensions with China have highlighted the technological gap between the Indian Armed Forces and its northern adversary. As a result, the introduction and development of game-changing armament systems is necessary. And with a dedicated future force, a group of thinkers, scientists and planners, both civil and military, should be given executive authority to outline the likely contours of conflict in the coming decades and identify opportunities for developing and integrating new technology weapons that will ensure the military is not disadvantaged in any potential scenario.